What's up, Internet? Today we're going over the UGS and how to install Inner AEG. In this video, we're going to cover the UGS Type 1 and Type 2. The Type 1 is designed for an AEG receiver that can take a mil spec buffer tube. That's a buffer tube to actually thread into the receiver. The TM spec is actually where it's going to slide onto the receiver and being secured by a bolt. Now, in order to install these systems, you will have to make slight modifications to the gearbox and the receiver. The Type 1 will require modification of the gearbox only, while the Type 2 requires modification of the gearbox as well as the receiver. Now, as far as the tools you'll need for these installations, for the Type 1 or Type 2, we need a hacksaw, drill tool, something to cut through the gearbox of your AEG. For the Type 2, you also need a screw gun or drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit to enlarge a hole in the back of the receiver. All right, so you've got the tools you need, let's get into it. All right, first modification we're doing is to the gearbox. This is required for both the Type 1 and Type 2 installation. Um, one thing we're really doing here is just opening up the back of the gearbox for that line to pass through to the buffer tube area. There's no real critical measurements, we're just basically removing this part of the gearbox to allow a clear passage for the airline. First is just outlining where you're going to cut. This makes it a little easier to keep track of where you're going once you actually start cutting metal. So as you can see here, I made a horizontal line uh, using a straight edge just for the screw hole, forward to the vertical line using the window as a guide. I do recommend before cutting the gearbox, you install two screws to help secure everything together, keep things from shifting around. So we've got the guide ready to go. Let's get out there and help this gearbox shed some weight. All right, now the gearbox is out of the way, we can move on to the next step, which is modifying the receiver. That is done for the Type 2 installation on a TM spec receiver. So TM spec receivers have a stock tail off the back. They can vary in length depending on whether the receiver is designed for a light mode ready buffer tube or just a standard buffer tube. In either case, you will have to shorten that stock tail slightly in order for the regulator to fit over top of it and lock in place. So even if your receiver is designed for a light mode buffer tube with a shorter stock tail, you'll most likely have to reduce that distance off the rear face slightly. The distance you need is 3 16 of an inch off the rear face. One thing to point out is that if you have a buffer tube sling plate that you're going to use, to actually install that and measure off the back face of the sling plate and not the receiver, that'll give you the correct distance for the regulator to lock onto. When it comes to measuring the stock tail, you can obviously use a scale or a ruler, but another trick you can do is using a drill bit. If you take a 3 16 inch drill bit, you can use that as a guide to mark your cut. You'll most likely find on the lightweight ready receiver that you'll only have to use a belt sander or sanding block to move a little material from the end to make the right length. So there's only a very thin amount sticking out. However, it's a traditional TM receiver, you're gonna to have to move quite a bit. So moving on to making your mark, if you're using this on the plate, you can slide that on, take the drill bit, guide, and you can scribe, marker like that, just make a guide for the cut. All right, so now we have our mark. Uh, we obviously have to remove quite a bit, so let's get it out there and take a little off the top. Now one thing you may find on manufacturers such as VFC is that they secure the buffer tubes using a bushing in the receiver instead of the screw actually passing through into the spring guide. So in those, you will have to knock out your bushing before continuing on. Moving on to the next step of the type to install, you have to enlarge the hole in the back of the receiver in order for the output cap of the regulator to pass through. This is actually one of the easier modifications we're doing because the hole in the receiver will act as a guide for your drill bit. So let's grab a drill and make a hole. We've now arrived at the final modification you have to do for reassembly. So that is trimming your airline to interface correctly with the output cap of your regulator. Now, the length you have to trim depends on the regulator type and the system you have in the gun. With type 1, there is an o-ring in the inner diameter of the output cap. So when you insert your airline, that o-ring creates a seal to the outside of your airline. With type 2, it comes with a secondary fitting that is pressed into your airline that then plugs into the output cap to create a seal. When you install your Type 1, we recommend having the gearbox and UGS installed, then measuring the airline so when you trim it, the end of the line extends past the front face of the output cap by at least half an inch. You don't want to go too past half an inch because that can create a kink and affect your air seal, but less than half an inch, you're not going to interface with that element correctly. With Type 2 installation, it's a little more involved because you have to account for the part fitting when measuring the airline. Typically you find if you trim the airline so that the end of the barb fitting matches the end of the gearbox, you'll be at the correct length. However, you also have to keep in mind that depending on whether you have a sling plate or not, that will change the distance in which the output cap intrudes into the receiver, so you do have to account for that on the fly. 
When it comes to trimming the air line, we don't recommend using scissors or shears or anything that pinches the line to cut it. When you do this, it can deform the line and make it more oval than round. So in the case of a type 1, if it's an oval line, it's not going to seal correctly to that inner o-ring. We actually recommend using a razor blade. With a razor blade, you can get a nice clean cut and the line will stay uniform. Once the airline is trimmed, you will have to install your part fitting. Um, this is done by pressing the fitting into the back of the airline. The airline is rather stiff, so it can be somewhat difficult to install. It's best to start pushing the airline onto the fitting first before you start heating it up. Once the line is pliable, it can be very difficult to get started. We recommend using a hair dryer or a heat gun or even searching in hot water for a few minutes to soften the line to make it easier to insert. Now that we have the airline squared away, it's time to reassemble the gearbox and reinstall it into your AEG replica. Now, most HPA systems come with a longer harness designed to route the FCU and battery to the buffer tube. Since we've replaced that, that obviously is not an option anymore. So we can either reroute to the front if your replica has room in the foregrip, otherwise you have to replace the harness with a shorter one and route it to the grip. Now that your gearbox is reassembled, it's time to drop it in the receiver and made it up to the UGS. So we're going to drop it in here, get our counter sex in the bottom. And do take note when putting the rear body pin in, to make sure where your uh, soldering wires are, make sure that's get pinched when you close the pin. Alright, so we're going to start by putting your nut on the airline, followed by your washers. And the washers just really two active spacers, you don't have to screw the nut down as far uh, if it's not needed. Just drop those on. And like that. Then we're going to put the UGS regulator onto the UGS stock rail. It should be oriented so the adjustment screw is on the top. And it's going to lock this tooth into the little notch on the bottom. As you install the regulator, you're going to press the barb fitting into the output cap of the regulator. And it does help put a little grease on the O-rings to make the slide in a little easier. Slide the washers up over there, pull by your nut, screw that down. Now for tightening the castle nut, you would usually use an armor's wrench, like this one. But if you don't have one, what you can do is actually tighten down the castle nut by hand first before tightening your inside nut. Then we tighten the nut on the inside, it'll pull everything together. But if you have an armor's wrench, which you can, I use online, you can just use that to tighten it down. Alright, we've got our UGS installed, now I just have to reassemble the rifle, which is no different from what you normally would, so it should be a snap. <coughs> Too much fairy dust. Once you get your tank on, you may find it does not index correctly to the UGS. So for example, you may find that your fill nipple is occupying the same place that the stock rail wants to be. With the two most popular tanks in the market, which is the First Strike and the Ninja, the regulators can actually be adjusted to change where they index to. When adjusting the first strike regulator, you do have to empty the tank first because it requires depressing the pin that would normally release the air. So once you have it purged, you insert your Allen wrench into the top of the regulator and you'll loosen the flange to the point that you can lift the threaded collar up and rotate. So now when you reinstall your tank, it'll line up where it should be. With the Ninja, things are a little bit easier. For that, just loosening three set screws on the silver collar around the regulator. This can be done while it's pressurized. So we just be loosen three screws and then rotate the tank. Retighten the screws and you're all set. Alright, only thing left to do is put your butt stock on. So for that, I'm just gonna slide on the back, then we'll hit the stop, pull straight down the release, and slide on the rest of the way. It'll lock in place. That concludes the installation of the UGS. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.